I'll tell you in the show. Let's go. Let's get rid of that so I never have to goof myself up. And let's go. in a bro face to you all you bright shiny people and thank you for tuning in with me on this Thursday when it is of course pissing it down outside not that I care because it's new graphics card day it arrived this morning mm, and the screwdriver was out I pointed out in the uh, Stark guild chat today I don't know if this happens to everybody else as soon as I pull out that screwdriver, you know the one, your PC screwdriver, everybody's got one, it's the PC screwdriver. Oh, something else needs fixing in the house, we don't use that screwdriver. That's the PC screwdriver. Leave it alone, I need to know where it is. It's important, <laughs> I need to know where that is. As soon as I pull that thing out, everything around me becomes destroyed. Like, absolutely wrecked. There was boots on the floor, which I don't know where they came from, there was socks, there's... Fucking crap everywhere. I seem to have a load more screws than when I started with. And all I was doing was slotting a graphics card in. I don't know, one of those things. But we did, in fact, get the graphics cards today. I got another 660 Ti, for those of you who are interested. It's going to last me another 12 months. I'm not going to instantly burn it out. I was fine with that. I was fine with that. I do stream in 720p, for those of you asking. I stream that way because Twitch does not allow me to change or to give you the option to change the resolution. And not a lot of people can actually receive 1080p streams, although I can stream quite happily at 1080p. So, on top of that, I was waiting, curiously waiting. So I, I posted a Facebook message earlier, and I was curiously waiting, sitting there on the throne. I was on the throne, and I was awaiting the arrival of the graphics card. Suddenly, suddenly from below me, as I was upstairs, the dog begins to signal to me that there is somebody in and around my house. And then there was a knock at the door. And I thought, Holy crap, I'm in mid-thronal. I'm in mid-thronal passage. And the fucking graphics card's here. <laughs> and I can't, I can't get up. <laughs> I can't get up. So what do you do? What do you do in that situation? Do I allow the graphics card to leave? And then have to go and pick it up myself at the post office in like 24 hours? No, duh. So I'm starting to power throne, right? You've all been there. You've got to power throne it out. And I'm considering at this point that I should open the window in the bathroom and sort of shout down to the guy and say, Hey, I'm coming. I'm just, on the, I'm just in the bathroom. Uh, something along those lines. But I thought, that's not very swish. It's not what a baller should do. So I power throned it, got my pants up, ran downstairs as a note fell through my door. Now, I assumed this note was to say, Hey, I tried to deliver your graphics card or your package and you'll have to collect it tomorrow. But the guy was still outside. So I reached down and swept up the note and opened my door and said, hey, I'm here. But then I noticed something. I noticed this is no delivery man. No, he's not in a van. He's not in any sort of clothing or uniform. In fact, this is a very plain clothes gentleman driving a reasonably average little spot town car. I then look, <laughs> and look towards the note which said, some company bailiffs. And that got me worried a little bit. Now, if you don't know what a bailiff is, a bailiff is a gentleman who's only doing his job, by the way. They got a lot of stick. <laughs> He's only doing his job. But a bailiff is a gentleman who's come to your house because you've not paid something important. And he's come to take away your stuff. He wants all your stuff. Now, I am a bit of a sir when it comes to my finances. I calculate things down to the day. I want to make sure things are done and proper. Uh, when it comes to like the t-shirt invoices, on many occasions I've asked early, can I pay early just to make sure we're all up and square. So I make sure things don't overrun too long if they do overrun for whatever reason. But everything's on direct debit. I know where my money's going. I need to with this job because we have good months and bad months. It goes like this with the YouTube. Suddenly I get an email saying, oh, there's been a problem with YouTube. We haven't been able to process all your views. So you're going to get a slightly less check than what you're owed. That's what happens in this business. And we'll pay it back next month or whenever. And that whenever kind of bothers me. So you have to be very careful what you do with your money. <laughs> As such, I saw bailiffs and I'm like, holy fuck. And this guy starts walking towards me. I then notice, now a little backstory here, my house when I originally got in here, which is pretty recent, if you've just joined the channel, there is a video on my channel when I moved from where I originally produced the videos, and I moved here to where I could have a giant room where I could put stuff like TVs and second PCs and all that kind of stuff and have a nice working environment. This place not only was disgusting, 
which we didn't care about because we could clean it up. But we also discovered it had rats. Emma's not a fan of rats, right? And it's... <laughs> I, I'm fine, you know, I'm fine. And uh, <laughs> there, there was rats under the floorboards in our extension. We have like a bit of a house tagged onto the end of the house where we store stuff. And it's got like washing machines and shit in it. And it had rats, which was gross. Absolutely fucking gross. We didn't have Ben at the time either. The house was so disgusting, and it's because the previous tenant at this property was in fact rank disgusting. There is an air conditioning unit up on that wall. You see that? It's very unusual for the UK because it doesn't get hot enough to require air conditioning. That is there because this house was so disgusting that two small children used to stay in this room and the air was so polluted that they needed to install this extractor machine and in my garden is a very, very large extractor device on the back of the house to kick out all the crap that this thing can suck in. That's why it's there. It's a true story. Completely true. That is why this machine is in this room, okay? So you can only imagine how disgusting this house was. This was to protect the lungs of her children. This one, she was a single mother. She had three dogs that she never walked. So our garden is in fact wrecked. It's better now, I've worked on it. It was wrecked from dog pee and there was poo everywhere. There were some things that I lifted out of our garden that you could not touch with human hands. It was rancid. So I look to the note that this bailiff has brought and I see the figure 950 pounds. Then I see the name on it and it isn't mine. And I go, yeah, fuck you, whoever used to have this tent, <laughs> whoever used to have this place. It ain't fucking me. And I was pretty confident, actually. I was pretty fucking confident it wasn't me. So when I looked at it, I saw this wonderful name on it. And I was like, Yo, you bitch. Because we get all her mail. She still has not told anybody that she doesn't live here. We've lived here for nearly a, nearly a year now, I guess. She hasn't told anybody. We get all her bills here. And the, the things saying you should still be paying us. Blah, 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 blah. I had huge issues with electricity companies proving that I was not this person. Because they wanted a lot of money. And I had just moved in. I ain't paying it. No, no way. And they were like, well, you should pay it. I was like, why Why would I pay it? <laughs> why the fuck would I pay that? And they were like, oh, well, you know, can you prove the date you moved in? I had to send over all sorts of documents. So this wonderful little bailiff man, who is now terrified of Ben. Ben is going nuts to the fucking wall at the window. And he's like, ain't nobody getting in your house, is he? And I went, no, there is nobody getting in my house. <laughs> fuck you. And then he proceeds to go... You owe a lot of money. We're here to collect your stuff. So that... This person doesn't live here. This person... He's like, oh, really? I'm like, yep. Don't live here. I had to prove it. Which is kind of interesting. I had to get my agreement out to prove that we were not this person. And she didn't live here anymore. And I had the documentation. Like a sir. I went, there's a letter. I moved in back then. Ain't me, son. Ain't fucking me. And he was like, oh, do you know where I can find her? Yes, yes I do. And you can find her here, and she's still with these people, and off your way. And never ever come back to my house. I can only imagine what would happen if Emma was to be here, and a bailiff turned up expecting to come in and take all our stuff. Not that Ben would allow that. But it was pretty fucking fun. Pretty fun stuff, and that was my story. We're going to have a bit of a fun daily today. We've been a bit serious this week, haven't we? We've been a little bit serious. We talked about douchebags and assholes and people being rotten. I did want to point out that on Tuesday, we had the big daily about that question I received. I also received an update from that 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 guy is doing incredibly well. He did leave his guild, but not without making his voice heard. And has now moved on to better pastures and is in fact happier for it. So we thumbs up to him for not only sending us an update, but also getting on with it. And he did what we, we said and suggested and it worked. And he felt much better about leaving, which was cool. What we did come from that, or what did come from that daily, is assholes and douchebags in your guild. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. I asked you guys, could you please send me, could you please send me your recounts of any assholes and douchebags that have been in your guild? Now, one, some of you will be going, why would you have a douchebag in your guild? Douchebags are terrible, horrible people. Get away with a lot when they're good players in World of Warcraft because no guild wants to lose its top DPS or its main tank or its best healer, right? There are certainly players that are just better than others. They're just flat out better and they might have a horrible, disgusting attitude to go along with them. In fact, if it would have been three years ago, they probably would have been called Preach. Yeah, they probably would have been called me, right? That was me. I thought I was the best in the world and therefore I could get away with murder and I did horrible, horrible, horrible things to people. So I just said, can you send me some ideas? 
about these people, and you did, which is always good, you did. And for those of you who still contact me about the Xbox 360, it looks like we've got it sorted. Uh, one of you, I've made a deal with one of you, and uh, hopefully we should have that sorted soon enough and get some footage out for you guys, because there's a lot of things we need to record for our PVG series that we can't really do on a PC. Hmm. So the Xbox 360 is on its way. Did you want me, guys? Did you want to talk about the new Xbox at all? Can you just let me know in the chat? And we can talk about it at the end of the daily if you want to talk about it. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you want me to talk about that. So it's not really what my channel's about. Okay, so I'm going to read you. It's a little bit like Drama Friday, which is of course tomorrow. A little bit like Drama Friday. No, <laughs> nope. Good. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, Drama Friday. We're going to read a couple of stories and we're going to talk about what happens. This is the important thing, and it's more for people who are either dealing with douchebags currently in your guild. Or if you're new to WoW, you're going to encounter these people. And the problems it can cause if it's not dealt with swiftly. I've always been a big proponent that you should never allow a douchebag to get away with anything. If you recognize this guy in your guild, get rid of him. Because down the line, this is going to cause you problems. So, <laughs> a funny one to start with, right? It came from Ivan. <laughs> this story bizarred, bizarred me out. But it's a nice little short story. It's, nice, it's a nice little short story, um, but I found it interesting it, nonetheless. Now, I'm going to read it out without looking at the chat, and then I'll measure your reaction to this one, okay? Hey, Breacher, my story is from a private server, and the douchebag was indeed our IRL friend who was raid leader and guild leader. If we did something bad, we had to do stuff for him. An example of this was I, who had to collect... 80 Eternals from every kind within 48 hours. The hardest of these were the Fire Elementals. I don't know how things were in Blizz's Wrath, but in my private server, the Eternal Fire farming spot was camped 24-7. No one in the guild was to help me or they would be kicked. Good old times. Fortunately for me, one of my friends told me that there was another farming place in Storm Peaks and he farmed with me. Smiley face. Well, that's my short story, and I suck massive nuts at English. Now, <laughs> mm. let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, my friend Ivan. Let me tell you something. That is the most bizarre shit I've ever heard of my entire fucking life. I'm serious. I've, I've seen some crazy shit. We've heard some crazy shit inside and outside of Drama Fridays. That is the most bizarre thing I have ever heard in my entire fucking life. That's weird, man. That is generally, genuinely really weird. Really weird. And it is worth buying the game to avoid ever having to do that. Because I cannot imagine anybody who is paying for World of Warcraft would ever expect anybody to go out as punishment and farm Eternals. That's really, really strange really strange and that's crazy that's borderline crazy and like yeah abusive <laughs> that is borderline abusive my friend that's not just a douchebag that's fucking creepy it's creepy weird to be like don't help him he must learn he must learn on his own that's really fucking crazy but that was a good story anyway nonetheless now on to a more relevant one <laughs> he said, uh, douchebag guild leader, possible drama story, I want your opinion please, and of course your opinion's here. Me and a couple of RL friends were in a guild all through Wrath and up to the Firelands. We had the biggest asshole of a guild leader ever. I mean, you could have a chat with him, etc. about most things, up until raiding. When it came to raid time, he turned into a complete horror. This is literally how bad he was. He used to call us out constantly, and everyone, but never himself. I was a Frost DK all through ICC, which is where our main heroic realm progress was highest. And I can admit, I didn't raid too much in the Burning Crusade, because I was one of those retarded kids who would call out my crits. Oh. <laughs> a crit! A crit! <laughs> a crit with a Frost DK, right? <laughs> Whoa, this seems to happen all the time, and this killing machine Brox, it's weird. And I sorted that out as soon as I got into the guild. But during the end of Wrath, like a month before Kata was released or something, Mastery was brought in and I went complete Mastery and on the Lich King Heroic, like every player, I AoE'd the shit out of the ghouls in Phase 1. Yeah, everybody did that. And my DPS would be triple anyone else's. You had bad warriors. I'm just going to tell you, you had bad warriors. 
There ain't nobody out DPSing a warrior on the Lich King. <laughs> there ain't nobody. I can't help but DPS some guys. Whirlwind's in my rotation. Success. <laughs> Success. I loved that Whirlwind was in my rotation. Guys, stop cheesing on the ads. Hey, man, I have two fucking buttons and one of them kills everything. Don't blame me. It's just the way the game is played, buddy. Just the way the game is played. Oh, you got a Shadow Moan? I do. <laughs> oh, what a pity. <laughs> But during the end of Wrath, like a month before Kata... Oh, okay. Now, after the raid, my friend was an officer. I declined this invitation because I could not be asked for these shit-talking officer meetings. I was called into one of these officer meetings. And seeing as I was over at his house, he told me that our GM was getting annoyed with me taking aggro off him two minutes into the fight. He said to listen in. And I shit you not. He was literally telling my friend to tell me to lower my DPS. And that the only reason I have the best DPS is because I had good gear. I don't know what he wanted to gain from that, but I didn't drop my DPS. Why should I? Correct. <laughs> drop your DPS. No. <laughs> no, I will not. So, good luck. I don't think I have a video of this fight on YouTube. I only have Lady Death Whisper, which shows me basically with my back to the boss not doing much because of my aggro. Anyways, this wasn't bad. It just gave me a big confidence boost. And he moaned about the DPS in officer meeting every raid night until Kata. This wasn't the end. This is how our guild broke up and exactly what he said after it. Kata launched and I dropped my DK for a resto shammy, as I wanted to PvP more. As I loved PvP since day one and actually got 2200 on him. But hey, that's by the by. We recruited a Danish mage. We'll call him... Thrun. You look Danish to me, Thrun. You look Danish. You're like a bacon master. And he was a really nice guy. Lovely to talk to. Not amazing in raids, but he but he was just fun to be around. And we could use all the people in the world as we were starting 25 months. Since Wrath, a few people in the guild, including me, were friends with a holy pala called Joculus. From the second best guild on the server. Who would regularly join us on his alts coming to the end of ICC. We kept in touch until he wanted out of the stress of a high-end guild during heroic progress in BOT. Needless to say, we recruited him, and he turned out to be a royal dickhead. Well played, Joculus. Well played. <laughs> him and Thrun pretty much got into our guild leader's head about making changes in the guild. Like changes way above our heads. I mean, we barely serve a 20th in Kata, and they were talking about things only world top guilds were doing. This is one of the big problems with dickheads, right? And especially if you recruit someone who is down ranking. It's happening more and more. Uh, some of you may have done this. You've recruited somebody who comes from a much better guild. It seems weird. Um, but they're looking for a way out of the stress and the dedication required in a high-end guild. They want out of that. In fact, I am one of those people, right? I turned my head away from it. I didn't want it anymore. I was like, I'm fine. I've done it. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to raid in a nice, relatively casual environment. But I certainly want to tone it down a bit. I want to pop the brakes a little bit. I want to take it easy. But... I was older then, and I knew that if I did that, I would be having to put up with things that I wouldn't ordinarily be putting up with, such as more wiping, delays in raid starts, slightly slackier trash farming, not as much punishments for doing things that are generally considered rude, such as shit talking and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And well, some people can't do that, right? Some people can't fucking do that. Some people are just... They don't get it. They downgrade in guild, but they bring with them their attitude. And they bring out that attitude that they're used to. Generally because that's what they're used to, but they can't accept it. And then they try to force things into you. One of the big problems with this, the big, big problem with this, is your guild leader, if he's not especially good, how can he not take the advice of a player who has considerably out-successed him? And outplayed him at every single opportunity. Who is miles and miles ahead of the progress curve of your guild. If your GM isn't strong and your GM doesn't know where your guild sits particularly. Hungry for progress. He's going to get, you know, he's going to be corrupted essentially. He's going to go all garrosh about it. He's going to go very, very iffy when he starts getting this into his head. How can you not listen to the advice given to you by a very much more successful player than you are? It's an, it happens. It happens a lot. You may have seen it happen. It all builds up to two days. And this is going to be really shot down because I, want to, I don't really want to make this a drama story. 
Day one. I applied to a guild that Joculus had come from. Slagged off the guild leader saying he was jealous. I mentioned that Joculus as someone who could vouch for me being awesome. He found out and told the guild leader numerous whispers between me and the guild leader basically raging at each other. So he asked for a vouch. Joculus, our hero here, was an absolute dick about it. Day two, Cho'Gal Heroic. The guild leader posted a video of one of our tries so we could workshop. Why the fuck we couldn't kill him? Did you ask me? Nope. The boss, not the guild leader. It turns out, and this is something horrible that happens, and one of the reasons that I tried to get people to workshop themselves. What do you think happened? We posted a video. The guild leader posted a video of himself. The guild leader is an absolute dick, right? This guild leader is a fucking horrendous asshole. Posts a video of himself playing. What's the worst thing that could be in that video that absolutely fucking destroys his credibility to the teeth? This is a guy who regularly complains about DPS, regularly complains about how you are performing, regularly complains about every aspect of you. Oh, close, close, clicker, Zo, Zo, like a boss. He's seen it happen before, no doubt, as I have seen it happen. Fucking clicker. Now, some of you are clickers, and we try and get you out of that habit. It's the worst fucking thing that can happen. There is a noticeable event when this happened, and some of you won't know this, so I won't question you guys on it, but Nihilum, at their peak, when they were destroying the Black Temple, when Nihilum absolutely creamed the rest of the world in the Black Temple, one of their mages... Considered by many, as he was a Nihilum mage, to be the best mage in the world, or one of, it's a fucking clicker. A motherfucking clicker, and we all saw it, and we all went, well, that ain't right. Huh. That ain't right. And it was one of the most embarrassing things to happen to that guild, especially amongst the top-end raiders, because we just laughed our asses off, because the guy was terrible. He's a really bad player. <laughs> I'm sure he cleaned up his act afterwards. But something like that is very embarrassing and very damaging. It really is. It's very, very damaging. <laughs> Turns out he's a clicker. He doesn't use cooldowns when tanking. Blames all of us for not healing properly. I lost my shit. I raged like fuck over Vent calling him every name under the sun. Lashed out at Danish people for running the guild into the ground. <laughs> oh, he blamed all of the Danish. I didn't, right? Gap. Guys, 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 I didn't blame the Danish, okay, it wasn't me, I, it wasn't me, okay, it's in, it's in the story, okay, he did that, not me, don't go Swedish on me, don't go Swedish, <laughs> don't go Swedish on me, I don't need it, I don't need it, <laughs> I don't need it, it's okay, I'm called the guild leader a self-righteous asshole. Raid was called. I wrote the funniest three macro guild leaving speech in history. I still have it and want to share it with you. And here is macro. I log an alt and simply write in guild chat in front of 32 people. I hope you're happy. My friend was at my house on his laptop and he put the officer channel on the speakers and the guild leader yells, I will hunt that cunt down. I swear to fucking God. Tell me where he lives. This is a very simplified story of running into the guild into the ground. You may use it if you want, but I would really like your thoughts. It's, it's one of those situations, you have two bad people come into there. Two people that are real douchebags in your guild. One, people who come from higher end guilds but don't understand that they have made the decision. It's their call to take a step down from that. And what they bring with them is a lot of baggage and elitism. A lot of attitude. And this is how it's done. That's the biggest thing. I always tell you guys, and when we did the recruitment video, when I did how you should write your application and join a new guild for the first time, you ask that guild how you want things doing. What you do not do, oh, I can't stress this enough because it is the most frustrating thing in the universe, is be the guy who goes, we're doing it wrong, you need to do it this way. This is how we did it in my old guild. If you've spoken those words, I guarantee you've annoyed so many people because it is really the douchiest things you can fucking say and people will hate you for that. This is how we did it in my old guild. It seemed better than the way you do it. Especially if they're on farm fuck content, right? They're farming a boss. This is how we did it in the other way. Uh, it's a douchey phrase. You also had the terrible player who has managed to work up that courage to go all the way to the guild vendor. That's all he's done. He's gone all the way to the guild vendor and bought a guild. <laughs> That's it. That's all he's done. And he's got 10 people to sign his little charter. That's all he's done. He's a terrible player. He's a clicker. He's judgmental. He's horrible. 
But you put up with him because of that GM title, right? See the way it links to the loyalty stuff we've already talked about? It's kind of cool. I know, it's like I planned it. It's all very cool. Those kind of combinations, really, really bad. Let's look at another one. This is the third story. I'm, I'm only going to do this one. Uh, this will be the last one. And then we'll have a bit of a chit chat. This one from Darius. I apologize if I spelled your name wrong because it has a Z in it, which is cool. Hola, Preach. Today I saw on the YouTubes about loyalty and potential trial douchebags causing problems. And I decided to tell you my short story from a bit of a different point of view. Back in tier 11, my guild decided to server transfer from shitty RP realm to Magtheridon EU, which was the lowest pop server EU at the time. Why? Why did you do that? Where shall we go? <gasps> the worst realm in the fucking soul of them. Let's go there. That sounds like a great, let's pay to do that. Recommended server. Oh, them GMs. <laughs> Recommended server. Realm first, maybe. Oh. Our GM figured that since we cannot get Realm first on our current server, we can just transfer and be the best. Worth it, right? What a sense of achievement. Let's pay money to go somewhere where we have no competition. I really feel good about myself. On a Realm without any real competition. When I spoke with him about it and told my concerns, he gave me a speech in the style, if we fail to get Realm first, you can leave. Which translates to what we talked about on Wednesday... On, th on Tuesday, just give it a try. Just give it a try. It'll be okay. If it doesn't work out, we'll discuss it then. But pay your real life money. Come with us. So you're kind of stuck there unless you've got loads of cash. And give it a try. Ugh. Classic. Obviously what happened was... <laughs> From semi-hardcore 25-man progression guild, we fell apart instantly to two 10-mans and then to one progress and one farm 10-man. I decided to leave and applied to the third best 25 heroic guild in my country at the time, somewhere around world 200th. My current guild was 1 out of 13 10 heroic, and they were 8 out of 13 heroic when I applied. Surprisingly enough, I got accepted. They needed reliable interrupters for Cho'Gal, people like me. And I played Resto Ellie Shaman and server transferred. And in this new guild, I faced the biggest retard I ever met. Now, some of you have voiced concerns because you've joined higher end guilds and you're struggling. And it's, a couple, it's a theme that some of you have sent me. Some of you are really happy that you took my advice and you moved up to 25 guilds and you're really enjoying it. But as you've moved further up, you've encountered more and more retards. And people who are just generally extremely rude and horrible people quite frankly just horrible horrible people uh, that's actually relatively normal it's rare to find a really high progress guild where there's a lot of nice people as weird as that sounds and it's generally for a number of reasons one people are really 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 protective People are really, really protective over their raid spots, and they do not like competition. They do not like competition under any circumstances. And the second thing is, they don't care who you are. They are there to raid. And frankly, those people are generally in the right. They don't need to be rude about it, but they do not want friends. They usually have friends. Most of you who transfer to the big end guilds actually have a ton of friends on Real ID. And it's very hard to be welcomed there. Until you prove yourself as being worthy of having a raid spot, there's possibly people who are sitting out for you. A good friend of theirs may be sitting out for you and they don't like it. They really don't like it. So I've never understood people who will go on farm raids regardless of whether they need items or not. They'll still go and they want to raid. It's not a case that they're asked to raid and they go, but they really want to. They like find it annoying that they might not get a raid spot. They get very frustrated by it. Uh, I never really got that. I mean, for me, if I could get a night off raiding, I, was, <laughs> I ain't going. <laughs> I ain't going, oh, you don't need me tonight? What a bummer. And I'm out of there. <laughs> That's how I used to roll. But some people aren't like that. And they get very upset at the prospect of them sitting out. They really don't like it. Uh, and they cause you problems as well. Who's going to be the dickhead? Who wants to be an asshole? Come on, we're having a little bit of a fun, relaxing daily. Who wants to be the asshole in the story? See you later, Epitropis. Uh, Anderson? Alright, Anderson. For some reason, this guy, Anderson, hated me from the very first day of me being in the guild. 
It wasn't just some ironical comments about my performance. I had shitty gear and, pla in a, and was in fact playing an off-spec during progression on Cho'Gal because Elemental was my off-spec before. It was straight like, you are a fucking moron, go die or delete WoW. You fucking suck, G quit now. You're a Down syndromed idiot. In before, it was not caused by me making mistakes or anything like that. It was his usual response to whatever I said on Vent or Guild Chat. I never spoke with him, amused him, or even made him angry. He was just straight rude to me. He was well known on the server for being a complete jerk, but also played in this guild since day one of vanilla. I decided to just keep my mouth shut and ignore him. Now, how many of you have run into this guy as soon as you joined the guild? He was just a complete fucking dickhead, and you don't understand why. It's always more frustrating when you don't understand why, even for me. If I piss someone off, I get it. I understand it. But when you join in, so some people are just complete dicks to you. you know, it happened to me in Method. Blatty did it to me. Not that we didn't re reasonably get on later on, but my first raid in Method, Blatty was a complete dickhead to me. To the point where I whispered to one of my friends, I was like, what the fuck is wrong with Blatty? <laughs> you know? It happens. I had no reason to. No problems at all. I'd never even spoke to him, but it was really rude to me. Really, really rude. And I didn't understand it. It turned out that was... Uh, that's just the way he is. He likes the way things are. But once you do your things, he do not give a shit. <laughs> it's about Hellstones. Hellstones. I hadn't dropped a Hellstone quick enough. Although I did drop one. Because it's me, right? Of course I'm dropping Hellstones. Uh, he's like, DROP THE FUCKING HELLSTONE! Oh, he's French, isn't he? DROP THE HELLSTONE! No, I BEGET YOU TO DEATH! I will BEGET YOU TO DEATH! Uh, so, fearing the baguette. Fearing the baguette, I of course dropped the hellstone pretty immediately. <laughs> Did I steal his baguette? No, no. Drop the health, drop the health stone, the health stone. Uh, it's just whatever silly things. I decided to mute him. How did I know this never stopped, you might ask? Because I saw links of screenshots of Guild Chat where he was shouting at me. That was sent between officers. Of course, officers or GM didn't do anything about it because they knew him well enough. You let it slide, right? This ruins your guild. And I knew that my objections as a trial would just be ignored. Correct, they would be. I said to myself, keep your mouth shut, do your job, be nice to other people, and hope to pass the trial. Why would I to stay in the guild with such a dickhead? Because of progression. It's true, right? One guy, we can go over it. It felt damn good when we were smashing everything on farm, and the moment when we killed Cho'Gal Heroic for the first time was amazing. But apart from this, I didn't feel good about the community there. People were just minding their own business, which they do. Very clicky. Top end guilds can be very, very clicky. Small groups of two or three friends. Uh, generally really close friends. Sometimes five, six. But it generally sort of starts to split off and people are in little, friend, little groups of their own. I stayed in this guild for only two and a half months. Uh, then my GPU burned and I, since I had no cash to replace it, after 30 days of inactivity, I got kicked out of the guild. After I came back, I couldn't fit their raid times anymore, so now I'm playing casual. Would I ever go back to this guild and raid again with Anderson? Or raid in a proper heroic guild with the same type of guy problem? Probably yes, because of joy of progression. But it doesn't feel good when you are treated like this. I always missed my old guild when, ma when I made friends through years. So, this is the third type of guy you're going to meet. This is the guy who's entrenched in the guild. Entrenched. And you can't kick him. And everything that people tell you about him is that you should kick this guy. He's, he's poison. He's actually poison to your raid. He's poisonous to new players. He's poisonous to everybody's environment. He's poisonous to just the raid as a whole. And the guild is, suffers because of them. It's really important. And some of you might have this guy in your guild now. He's, you've known him for years. He's like your brother. He's like the dickhead brother or uncle dickhead. He's one of those guys. But he's so entrenched in the guild that he can get away with whatever he wants. And, he and openly says whatever he wants. Even when it's just diabolically rude and unnecessary. And really, really disastrous for the future of your guild. Most trials won't last it. And why? Because they won't put up with it. Especially if they've got some mature head on their shoulders. I won't put up with any shit. You guys know that. I won't put up with it. I don't tolerate it. I have just no interest in it. And I'll kill it as quickly as possible. If I joined a guild like that now, fuck, man. I'd leave instantly. I'd be like, what the hell is... Or I'd, or I'd start some shit before leaving. It's good content for me, right? Or I'd send in Ghost. I'd be like, oh, you're a dickhead? What's that? Ghost? Take over the mic. I'll let Ghost have some fun. Um, it's an interesting story. Me and Ghost have never raided together. We've raided together once in the entire history of World of Warcraft. And we pretty much know that we couldn't really raid together. We have just two completely different styles. That's fine. It's fine. A lot of you will tolerate your IRL friends. It depends on how good a friend they are. 
Me and Ghosty are fine with not raiding together, right? We're fine with that. <laughs> we have no issue with that because we understand it, right? We're both mature people and we understand that we conflict in games. That's okay. We can have fun together. Um, but it's kind of strange that these entrenched people, the more you let them get away with, the truth is, the more you let them get away with, the more bad it is. And I don't think a lot of people who are used to it, you can be used to the guy who's really racist and really horrible to new players because that's how he is, right? And some of you will be out there going, well, we've got that guy in our guild, but that's just how he is. I don't think people really appreciate how bad that is for your guild to survive. Because it is really, really bad. It's, it's happened to me twice where I've joined a guild and met somebody like that. And it's not ended well. I've ended up leaving. And you know where I ended up ultimately. And I could have been an asset to that guild. I think so. Uh, but just because of that one person, I'm like, I'm not putting up with this. But new recruits being treated that way? Is that how you're going to build a long-term guild? Do you even aware of it? If you're a GM or a raid leader right now, are you aware that this is what people think about your guild? That this guy is the biggest dickhead on the server? If you have a guy in your guild who's renowned as being the biggest jerk-off on the server, retard, do you want him with you? Has he been there for years? Make the decision. You need to think about it because your guild won't last. It won't last. And you'll end up just with him and the people who know him. And new people will just rotate through your guild. And it's, it's not nice. It's not nice. Good stories, though. Gush kicked him a few days ago. Well played, Bear Grylls. <laughs> well played. Should we D-Dot? No, Blatty's fine now. Blatty's okay. Blatty's okay. It's just the first raid blues. you got to remember that um, it's interesting in the top end guilds, especially when you reach sort of method status, is how many people they cycle through as trials. A lot of people, as I've said in the past, join those kind of guilds to see if they can do it or are joining and not prepared for exactly what it commits. Anybody can write in an application form, I'm prepared to give up my life to raid right and prepared to take weeks off work and prepared to do it and then you get there and you can't really do it you don't really understand what that means and people come and go all the time so it's not surprising that on my first raid i did get a little bit of hassle but it's quite normal it's quite normal interesting how many of you okay let's ask the ultimate question how many of you have met or dealt with somebody who sounds like the three people we discussed today how many those are generally the three different types of douchebags that you're going to meet how many of you Anderson, Zoe, Zoe's there, Pilot, everybody, I am that guy, that voodoo guy, everybody, yeah, everybody, look at that, uh, nobody's saying no, not even one, luckily, oh, Thrun was there, of course, Thrun has to be the odd one out, that's why I can do swag transmogs, Arculus has got one, I was the guy, <laughs> everyone, me, 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 several times, it, they're everywhere, they really are everywhere, it's how you deal with them that's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting, I hope you can make the decisions easier, some of these people will find it really hard, I was explaining to him earlier how much he people hate confrontation. It's, it's wow, right? You're on the other end of a PC. Ain't no shit gonna happen to you. Deal with it properly and you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Delore, you're never that guy. You're too cuddly. You're too cuddly. Fun story. Now, Drama Friday's tomorrow. Drama Friday's tomorrow. Shall we look at some titles? I haven't checked them. Uh, My Tail. Mm, okay. It's just called My Short Tail. I hope it's not about like an actual tail. The Saga of Drama, chapter one, in PDF, no less. The Saga of Drama. Wow, the presentation. Oh my God, look at this. It's in colors, it's got lines, and it's got a key. This is how, this is a drama story, right? This is how your drama story should look. This is, look at this. Look at that, look at this. Look at the spacing. It's got all the people who are in it. We've got four characters. Nice, easy to read fonts in PDF. Look at that. Oh. I love you guys. You guys know how to write a story. The journey, the journey from arrogant noob to regular noob. I like it. The guilt of apology. Interesting. The shortest subscription ever. We've got some good ones. Uh, a quickie drama story. The story of the thieves. That could be good. My gaming story. Year after year, then Wrath Baby raiding. Let's have a read of that. Another kind of drama story. Mmm, another kind. So I've got, what, is that eight? I've got another one. The Portuguese Farmer. I think we read that one last time, right? The Portuguese Farmer? I think we, I think that's it. I've had seven this week. We had the Portuguese Farmer last time. So we've got lots of drama stories for you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we've done the drama. We've done the Portuguese Farmer. That's good. So I've got seven to choose from. I'll have a read from them tomorrow um, or tonight and see which ones we're going to read. But thank you for tuning in with me today. If you've got douchebags in your guild, please deal with it. 
or try and appreciate how bad they are for your guild long term. If you want to stick around in the game and have a fun time, it's worth cutting your losses sometimes, or at least trying to have a word and say you just can't behave that way. Um, ask your trials. A big one is to ask your trials and put make sure they're comfortable with answering and say, hey, is anybody causing you problems? Because I just want to check. It's worth me checking. You've been here for a few days now. Please be under no... And this isn't like, say something bad about one of my friends, I'm going to kick you. It's a sign of a good GM. It's just, can you find it? Let me know what's going on in your guild. Um, it's difficult. It's kind of like that, uh, what's that show where the bosses go undercover? I think it's called Undercover Bosses, so I should probably guess the name. <laughs> I should probably guess the name. Um, <laughs> is to go and do that, is to just ask the question. Uh, and just ask, just be honest. Just be fucking honest. Honest and just say, look, it's nothing to do with kick you, but I like to check up on how trials are treated in the guild. And please, please, please be honest. Uh, it's important and do stuff like that. When is the PvE video coming out? As soon as it's ready. It's not the best answer I know, but that is the answer. We're going to be playing some Brutal Legend here in a couple of minutes. I'm going to take my usual break, get my mouth sort of ready, and then we're going to carry on powering the power of Jack Black. So we're going to be doing it. I've done the Bailiff story. You've missed it. All right, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I will be back for the stream of uh, Brutal Legend in about two, three minutes. All right, guys. And apparently we're going to bump into Ozzy Osbourne, so I'm told. <laughs> I'll see you soon.